What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here, back for round 10 of my Champions League. Just five games left to go, including today, until we are headed into our semi-finals. And basically at the moment, pretty much any of the eight teams could make the top four and finish in the top four today. Uh, Wicked Takers taking on the Sledging Cyclones. Wicked Takers just hasn't been their season so far. Top of the table clash follows that with the Royal Heine taking on the Sharks. So Boundary Bashers and the Shredders. Boundary Bashers started off strong but they'll be looking to come back now. And the Vikings taking on the Rejuvenated Snipers who have won four on the trot. Enough chit chat. Let's go and get straight into the game. So starting off first with the Wicked Takers Sledging Cyclones game. And the Sledging Cyclones they've done pretty well for their debut season. Currently sitting fourth after nine rounds. And the thing I think for the wicket takers is that Harrison Green and Hick have just not been doing the job that they were doing last season. Last season obviously such deadly and uh, well just deadly bowlers. Deadly and I'm trying to think of another word that I can use. Um, aggressive bowlers but they just haven't been able to quite do it this season. Harper has gone for a well made 44. He's gone to Allen caught by Hesselgreave. Uh, so 44 of 46. Smith still hanging in there and Harden as well. This has been the core, I guess, of the runs that have come for the Sledging Cyclones this season. Smith's just gone for 40. Hick, as I said, he hasn't really had the greatest of seasons, has just gone and picked up the Wicket Takers opener. And um, there's another one. So Hesselgreave gets Harden for 44. And that has been a little bit, I guess, of the story of this episode so far, is that the Sledging Cyclones batsmen, they've got starts, but they haven't really gone to kick on and get something big. Saying that, Ray and Lindsay, they're in here now, both in the 30s, make that 40s, and um, looking good to go and post a decent total with 10 overs left to go. Lindsay has just gone and posted his half century, so has Ray before getting bowled uh, by Cook. But this is going to be a very competitive total that the Cyclones are putting on the board. Saying that, though, I've said this, I think, almost every episode. Because of the way the Cyclone side is made up, obviously, not too many bowlers, uh, not too many all rounders. Anything can happen. So 290 is the total that is being chased. They've got off to the best possible start with uh, Captain McKenzie getting Warner for four off two and uh, Ashcroft getting Barnes. So both openers back in the hut early on. Remember, 290 is the total that is being chased. So they're going to need to really go and try and pick up the scoring rate here, the wicket takers uh, in this, well, in this game. I was going to say this season, but they do kind of need to pick it up this season as well, because last year's defending champs are currently sitting at the bottom of the heap. Ellington, he's doing his work. He picks up a fine half century, and he's looking to go and take his side back to the winner's circle, because it has been a while since we have celebrated a wicket-taker's victory here in, uh, in this Champions League. And as I said, because of the way, I guess, the Sledging Cyclone side is made up, because of because it is stacked with batsmen, obviously you are getting guys who aren't really bowlers that are doing a bit of work. And just like that, Romeo is gone for 50. But Ellington, he's gone and picked up 100 before being bowled by Lindsay. So 103 off 111 for the captain. Still may not be enough. We will have to wait and see. There is probably still going to be roughly 100 runs needed off the last 10 overs. We've seen it happen, uh, you know, quite often in one day internationals. Can it happen here? I don't think it is going to be the case. Cameron gone for 29. Saying that though, Ben Cook, he's come out with a bit of intent. He is, uh, well, 34 off 19 now. And um, it is going to be probably a little bit closer than I originally did anticipate. The slight clones getting up just by eight runs in the end. Ellington picking up that 103, but it wasn't enough to carry his team home. Lindsay, man of the match, two for 38 and 69 out of 63. So that takes the Cyclones to another win. Takes them to 12 points, and they are now currently tied with Royal Heine. So this game here between the Royal Heine and the Sharks... Big game for both teams. The Sharks have been on a bit of a losing run as of late. The Royal Heine, they'll be looking to win this so they can stay equal top, whereas the Sharks will be looking to stay on 12 points with those others there. So let's go get straight into it. It is the Royal Heine who are batting first. And I talk about it time and time again, but top fours in this competition, you can't really look past the Royal Heine. Pookie has got McCullum. McCullum had a good start to the season, and he's kind of just dampened off a little bit. Eight off five here today. Frost, however, he's got off to a good start. 50 off, I think, 39 deliveries uh, to really go and get his team off started on the right foot. But Captain Cliff, he's come in, and he has got him for 51. Crook, he's had a bit of an indifferent tournament. I think he was... Uh, no, he was the Royal Heine player this season. I thought he was the overall MVP, um, but not the case. And there's another one. So um, finally, we're getting some wickets from myself, the captain. Uh, two for 10, make that uh, two for 16 off six overs so far. And um, this is a pretty good comeback. We just need to really go and continue on the Sharks and, uh, and carry on, I guess, 
the good form. But the bowlers have bowled well today, and um, it may just be these five that have bowled. We have seen in the past a lot of bowlers being used by a lot of teams in this competition. However, I think today it is just going to be the five for the Sharks, which could potentially work very well. Two for 32 for Cliff. In the meantime, Fish has gone and passed uh, 50. He is now on 65, and so is Harris. He's gone and passed 52. So uh, just as I say that, another bowler does come in after saying, oh man, another two bowlers coming in after I said that not uh, it could potentially just be these five. And all of a sudden, it was a very good start, but um, they have gone and really come back here, the Royal Heine. 267, I believe, is the total that is being required here by the Sharks. So it was a very good comeback uh, from the Royal Heine after they did struggle a little bit uh, with those early wickets that they did lost. But a very good partnership uh, between, I think, five and six. I think it was Fisher and Harris really went and got them over the line. 267 is going to be a very good total, uh, a very good chase for the Sharks to go up and get there. But they've started off almost a perfect start. Partnership of 77, and uh, both players moving nicely towards their half centuries at a fairly good rate. Lickley's just gone and picked it one up there. Um, so he's striking it just under a runner ball. So is Turnbull, um, which is a good sign to see. Nice 100 partnership has been gone and put on the board. Turnbull has just gone and passed his 50. And remember, as I said at the start of this game, this is a big game for both teams. Obviously, the Sharks, for them to stay in touch, with those other two teams on 12 points, and for the Royal Heine to move away. Lickley's just gone, and he has smashed his 100. He was just going along with a runner ball, but has absolutely just moted it towards the end. He is now striking it over 100, and Turnbull, he's looking pretty good as well. 86, make that 96. These guys, no nervous 90s for these fellas. Yes, there is for Turnbull. He's gone for 98 off 116 to champion, and but I think it is just a little bit too late. Uh, for the Royal Heine. And we are going to see the Sharks finally get back into the winner's circle. Lickley, man of the match, 153, not out of 129. How can you not give it to the kid? Turnbull unlucky not to add to his runs this season so far, but a 98, very well made 98 off 116. And that sees the Sharks win by nine wickets with six overs left to go. And that sees them back up into second place. So uh, equal on points with both the Royal Heine and the Sledging Cyclones. Now we have the Boundary Bashers and the Shredders. Shredders, game for them as well. They can possibly move on to 12 points. And um, it is a big game for the Boundary Bashers too because a win here today would actually take them in the meantime up into fourth. So the one thing I do love about this tournament, I mean, it was good last season when there were five teams, even though it was a little bit uneven. I mean, the Snipers only won one game. The thing I like about this tournament here, the thing I like about the eight-team format, at the moment it is so close. I mean, like, if the Shredders win this one, they obviously go and get up onto 12. We have four teams on 12 points. The Boundary Bashers win this, they move into fourth. They're currently seventh. Um, so it is a very, very close table. Uh... Back to the game, I guess. McIntyre gone uh, for 21. Cook, he's still in there, and he's in with the wild card, uh, De Villiers. We haven't really talked about the wild cards too much uh, in this episode, which is a little bit strange, but I'm sure they have gone and done a few things. Cook, in the meantime, he has gone and passed 50, and De Villiers is moving towards there as well. Cook gone for 60 off 79, and Jones, he's coming. He was 10 off 3, so absolutely motoring it there for a second. De Villiers has gone and passed 50, and that's what I think the Boundary Bashers need. They have really been lacking runs on the board in these past few episodes, so hopefully uh, these two can go and carry on, I guess, the good start and the good platform that they have laid so far. So, uh, closing in on 200 as well, uh, with about 10 overs left to go. So, you know, we're looking around to 260, 270 score, I think, here would be pretty par, unless De Villiers goes absolutely mad, which we know he can do. He has passed his 100 in the meantime, 122 now, striking it over 100. Yeoman, he's been the only guy providing any resistance uh, with the ball today. He is 3 for 57 off his 10 overs, but 283 is the total that the Shredders are chasing down, and what a start from low. Getting a double wicket. Oh my god, he got two. I was just going to say he did pick up Amlar, picked up the wild card, but he has got the captain as well. And there's a run out to Connor. So he is gone for six. Dehingar's the only guy. He's showing a bit of resistance. 33 at the moment. Um, but I think, you know... Again, with the makeup of sides, there are quite a few teams that do have all-rounders that are batting quite low because of the lack of the bowlers in the tournament. But, um... I mean, down until eight is basically your all-rounders for the Shredder's side. So um, anything really could and will happen. Dehinga has gone. He's past 60. He's building a nice wee partnership with Hasty here. I can't even remember what the total is that the uh, the Shredders are chasing. I think it's about 290, but I did get a little bit excited in, um, in all that has been going on. So, 
we will we'll just have to wait and see. The one thing I was going to say, they have gone and brought it in now. One thing we have seen quite often this tournament from all the teams is using, I guess, like four frontline bowlers very early on and then making up the remainder with the remaining bowlers. Hasty, he's gone. He has passed his 50. And Dehingar has just gone and passed 100 before he has gone to row for 102. And then Hasty has run out for 73. So you would have to say that that probably is going to be lights out for the Shredders in this game. De Villiers has even come in. He bowled a maiden first up, went for eight in his second over. But is there anything the man can't do? He scored 100 odd, 120 odd in the game. And just like that, the boundary bashers win by 40 runs. Aber de Villiers, as I said, man of the match. 130, sorry, off 127. That was not out as well. So with that done and dusted, as we can see, as I said, the boundary bashers do momentarily move on to fourth. They're on 10 points. But this game here, you'd have to say between the snipers and the Vikings, basically a win for either of these two is going to catapult them into fourth place. You wouldn't... This is probably the two form teams at the moment, especially over the last four games. Snipers are unbeaten in their last four, I believe. So it will be very interesting to see what comes out and what happens here because the Vikings have been playing very well too. Henry has got them off to a good start. He is striking at over 100. Lepaki's a little bit slower. He's 8 off 26, um, but obviously can come back and make amends for that later on in the innings, but we will have to wait and see. It has Something's just clicked for the Snipers. They were so close. You know, in the opening rounds, they had games that they were very close that probably they should have won but didn't win. And then one week, everything just seemed to click into place and things just started working for them. Clayton's gone and picked up two quick wickets. He's got Captain Henry and he's got the wild card Peterson, 37 and 3 respectively. But still a fairly good uh, platform that has been posted here. Lepaki's, as I said, he did start slow, but he has caught up. He has moved on to 50 there. Dale is gone for 12, bowled by Spearman. But it was a pretty good platform. After 25 overs, there was about 100 runs on the board, just two down. Um, and Illingworth has gone and picked up another one there. So someone just needs to stick around with Leparkis. And um, they can't go and do that because he has gone for 97. Very well made 97. And Spearman's gone and picked up Macon. And just like that, all of a sudden, we are seeing a little bit of a collapse from the snipers um, after that top order had gone. Darcy's still in there and Clapton's still in there. Dobbs only made six today. And um, Baxter's actually bowled pretty well. Three for 39. Make that four for 44 of his eight overs. And Clapton, I wasn't even sure uh, what the Vikings are going to be chasing. Quickly went to go and have a look uh, on my laptop, but didn't quite catch it in time. So it's going to be as much a surprise for you guys, or probably less of a surprise, because you guys can go back and rewind and see. Whereas I'm just like, I don't know how many they're chasing. Vanderberg goes and picks up both openers. Um, so that is what they need. He's been expensive today. Two for 47 off his five overs. So he's going at about nine runs and over. So they'll be looking to go and try and, I guess, peg that back a little bit. But Ronke's gone. So I guess the one thing that is going in the favor of the moment at the Snipers is obviously the wickets in hand. They have picked up three big wickets. If they can get Captain Roberts as well, because he's had a very good season. Last season did bat down about seven or eight. He has been, well, he's promoted himself, I guess you'd say, uh, to number four this season. It has really paid dividends. He has been scoring runs for fun, and he's gone and picked up another 50 here. But just like that, a double strike, a run out, a triple strike, I should say. First of all, Roberts has run out by Hayes. Then Spearman has gone for a second ball duck to Dale, and then Dobbs has gone and picked up Musket, so things have really just gone and turned on their head a little bit here, um, Dobbs has finished his overs, he is 2 for 50, and um, Peterson has gone, he's picked up a double whammy as well, so maybe a few more runs on the board, I, again I can't remember what is being chased, so this is going to be a very very close finish, because I can't remember what is being chased here. <sighs> oh my goodness, the Vikings get up by one Wicket, would you believe it? With four runs, oh sorry, with uh, yeah, four balls left, sorry. It was four runs, it was an ultimate four that went and got up there. Lepakis couldn't quite get his team over the line. He was 97 off 107. And the problem was no one really stuck around with him uh, to really go and I guess make themselves a nuisance. But just like that, the Snipers winning run has come to an end. That win I don't think will be enough to see the Vikings shoot up into fourth position. But they put, uh, could possibly shoot up into fifth. We will quickly have a look at the league table. So as we can see, it is still very, very close. Royal Heine, the Sharks, and the Sedging Cyclones, they are all on 12. They make up our top three. 
Then we have the Boundary Bashers, the Vikings, and the Shredders, who are all on 10. Just one win behind 4, 5, and 6. The Snipers, their magnificent winning run had come to an end. They are 7th with 8 points. And the Wicket Takers, last season's champions, are on 6. But saying that, after this, there are still four games left to go. So still eight competition points left up for grabs. So still plenty of time for those teams who are outside the top four to obviously go and make it up. But anyway, guys, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to leave a like. If you are new, please do subscribe. Make sure you check out my Facebook and Twitter links that can be found down below in the description. Hope you've had an amazing weekend so far. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We've got more Don Bradman cricket coming your guys' way with my career. Make sure you do not miss that.